Hey guys, my name's Darlene. I'm back with another episode on earth and medicine. So today I'm gonna do another full hoof trim. This is my horse, Sunny. He is a seven-year-old Welsh pony. I've been trimming my horse's feet for about two years now, and I'm definitely not an expert. Uh, nobody has uh, taught me how to trim my horse's hooves. I've just been pretty much teaching myself. Uh, something that I definitely like to do is just try to inspire other people to learn how to do this craft. Uh, definitely for barefoot hoof trimming, I think if your horses don't have any issues with their feet, it's something that I think most people can learn how to do. Of course, there's always room to improve. Uh, I'm still learning, so I welcome all suggestions and if you guys have any tips or tricks. So uh, let's get started on Sunny's feet. So a little bit about me, I am a first year resident in internal medicine, so I am a doctor. I live in Iowa now. Some of my other videos are from when I was living in Las Vegas, Nevada for medical school, but we're here, uh, almost winter in Iowa. It's very cold, it's about 20 degrees outside, about 40 degrees here in the barn, so hopefully we stay warm while we're doing the horse's feet. <laughs> All right, so these are the tools that I like. This is the hoof pick that I use. Um, this is something that I got on Amazon. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. Uh, but I like this hoof pick because it's got a lot more leverage um, with this bent hook versus just like the straight hooks that are uh, the standard. Maybe I'll show a little bit closer. Um, but I get a lot more leverage with it. It doesn't have a brush, so um, I have actually two hoof picks that I use but it's definitely a, a good thing to have. Um, my hoof knife is a right-handed hoof knife. Um, I don't really sharpen my blades. I probably should, but I haven't had to yet. They're pretty sharp, but I think I got this for like 20 bucks um, at Tractor Supply. And I really like this one. It's not a stainless steel. Um, I do have some stainless steel knives, but I don't think they're as sharp. Um, so this one does kind of tend to rust here in Iowa where it's a little bit more humid. Um, but definitely a hoof knife, at least a right-handed um, hoof knife if you're right-handed. The next thing I have is a rasp. Um, I think this was 40 bucks at Tractor Supply. Um, I haven't sharpened my rasp ever, and it's been like two years. Um, probably could, but it's just been so good. Um, I haven't really had any issues with it. So, but you can resharpen these, um, but this is a rasp. And then these are nippers. You can sharpen this as well. These, it's definitely, um, I think this is the last thing I added to my kit because I was a little bit nervous to use nippers when I first started. I used to just rasp and use the hoof knife, but now that I'm more comfortable, um, nippers are just, they make your, your whole process so much faster. So gotta get a pair of these. All right, let's get started. So we'll start with his front left first. Um, I'll just kind of get a, a look at his hoof at first. Um, each hoof is different, and I like to see how he carries his weight. Um, here you can see that he kind of stands a little bit more on the inside of that hoof, and it looks like he's flaring a little bit more to the left. And then if we look at the side, and we look down at his heel right here, so we see his heel's pretty long, but it's actually pretty symmetric with the toe. Uh, so I'm probably just gonna take the wall down evenly throughout the whole hoof. So when I look at his hoof right now, um, I would say definitely he's got almost an inch of extra growth. I've really been letting these grow out because um, in residency I haven't had as much time to do their feet, but they still look pretty good. Um, so I'll kind of come in here and dig out all this dirt and horse poop because it makes your job harder and it also dulls your tools if you have some wet stuff in there. And also along the wall, if there's little stones that get stuck in this wall, that's not good for your tools either. All right, so probably what I'll do now is I'm just gonna start with my nippers. I'm gonna put my knee around and lock his foot in here because it frees up my other hand. You, can all, you don't have to do this if you're kind of nervous with your horse, but it makes it easier. Alrighty, so we actually moved into the barn because the lighting's a little bit better, so you guys can see what's going on. Working on the front left hoof now, putting my leg over, looking at the wall. I think I'm gonna take probably an inch down evenly from the whole thing. If I look straight down, you can see this outer wall here. Uh, is a little bit longer and this inner wall just looks like it flares to the outside but um, I'm gonna take probably an inch off of it so I think it's easiest if I start here at the quarters the quarters are the part of the hoof that is uh, 
on the edges. So pretty much right here, right here, this is the heel, heel, toe, start at the quarters. So it's a little bit hard to get a whole bite this big at the first one, so I'm probably gonna go an angle first. <laughs> oh, it's hard. Okay. Next bite, make it flat. There we go. Now when I get to the toe, I'm gonna start to angle my rasp a little bit this way because the toe, I'm gonna take it a little bit more of at almost a 45 degree angle. So I'm starting to angle a little bit here at the quarters. There we go. I'm gonna angle even more. Okay. Chop. Take smaller bites so it's easier to, to nip that. I'd actually feel even comfortable going a little bit more, uh, taking even more off, but I'm gonna stick with this because this is where I started. Yeah, he's definitely got a lot of hoof, so he can handle a good amount off. There we go. And again. Okay. Grab all that extra sole in there too. Okay. Sometimes I start with um, doing a hoof knife first, but I'm actually not because I like the shape of his sole right here. I don't think he really needs any sole off. I'm gonna take a good amount of his heel here. And then I'll go back. I'll take this heel too. And when I'm on the heels and the quarters, my the angle of my um, nippers is flat, so I'm not doing an angle. So that's pretty good. I mean, right here, this is where I first came in. It's not really flat with the rest of it, but I'll just take my rasp and I'll make this even. So it actually looks pretty nice. I like that a lot. Um, I ended up taking more heel on this side than this side, so I'm actually gonna take my rasp and take more of this heel off. Yeah, so you can tell it's a little uneven, but that's something that's totally workable with uh, the rasp. And I actually don't even think I'm gonna take any of this sole off with the hoof knife because it's got such a great concave kind of like a bowl, like a cup like this. It's got a great concave look to it. He has really great natural hooves. Um, but I am gonna clean up his bars a little bit. The, bar, the bars are the part of the sole that uh, goes along the frog right here. So this is a bar on the outside of my finger. This is a bar, this is the frog. All right. I'm gonna go back, put my foot around. Get it stable. I'm gonna start with the smoother side of the rasp versus the, the coarser side. So I kind of do the smoother side first, like the fine rasp, because I think when I start with the coarser side, it ends up going like really, really bumpy when it's not smooth first and it's really hard to get an even, an even uh, slide. So I start with a very light rasp over it, kind of smoothing out the big bumps first and then I'll go in with a coarse rasp where I think I need to. So I really kind of just look at the overall hoof. This heel's higher than this heel just by a tiny bit. I'm kind of looking at a line straight across here. And to me that seems like there's that chunk right there. And then when I'm also looking down, straight down the plane of the hoof, I want to make sure that compared to like this line going across here, is there high spots or is there low spots? And to me, it looks like there's maybe a high spot right here. And other than that, it actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do like relatively even plane. 
and kind of on the edges of the wall going towards the toe, I'm gonna start getting that 45 degree angle on the wall. Helps them roll off their toe a little bit more. Still using the fine rasp. Not as good as my left hand. It's not as coordinated. So I'm not as smooth. Anything that's on the left side. Okay. Switch my rasp around. I'm gonna go upwards right here on this heel, bring this heel down a little bit. Don't want to bring the heels down too much because then they end up just kind of growing their toes out longer than I'd want and losing their heel. But I do want them to be even. You don't want any high spots. So, kind of, if you go flat, I mean, Usually don't go side to side at the same time, but if I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna have a flat angle across the bars and the heel, and then a little bit of a, a not a, uh, I guess this would be like 15 degrees coming down on the toe right here. And they say 45. I mean, I don't know if I always go to 45. It's probably more like a 15. And then before I take too much off, I just like to set the hoof down and look at it from the floor. And honestly, to me that looks really good. So, if I look at it, is this, if I were sitting on the floor, tip my camera a little bit more. His natural hoof kind of, he just has longer heels than my other horse. But I think that that's his natural way that he, he sits on his feet so I can still take a little bit more off I think of that outside heel and then we'll look from the front I think it actually looks pretty good from side to side on the front and then when I top dress it I'll make this roll even more apparent on the toe so that uh He's gonna chip less and then flare less. All right. All right. A little bit more down from this quarter. Okay. And then a little bit more from this heel because Much of the walls off back here. All right, I'm just gonna leave it as that. Clean up his uh, his bars a little bit. Let's see how do I want to start this out. Sometimes doing the hoof knife is a little hard when their feet are really dry because it's hard for me to get the knife to go smooth and it, it tends to go like chip 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 chip. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really need to take that much off. Maybe a little bit here at the heel. But maybe a little bit right here. Yeah. I think I'm actually gonna leave that be. It's not crazy, so that's fine. And then I think his frogs look pretty good. I cleaned him up a little bit the other day, so I don't need to really do anything. Take a little bit of... But honestly, the more I kind of like get super meticulous, I feel like I tend to mess things up. So I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm looking at his back left. This one always tends to flare and you can see it's kind of got a crack there because I've left it go kind of long this time. And that's the most natural way that it's trying to break off those quarters by chipping at the quarters there. Um, so I'm kind of looking at his balance. I like. You know, you kind of get to see 
your work from your last trim by how they grow out. And I like how they grew out. They look pretty even. So um, I'm just going to trim them probably pretty even again and maybe take a little bit more off on that outside flare. All right. He's kind of funny with his back feet. He's newly broke and didn't used to be good with his feet. So I'm always kind of aware of his back feet and I'm always ready to grab onto his hoof. If he pulls it forward, I grab on here. And if he yanks it forward, I can hold until he relaxes and then I kind of push his foot back out again and I'll put my knee here and stabilize. All right, so this is his hip, his back foot. It actually looks really good to me. He's got this flare here, but it's not crazy. Um, I'm just gonna take it down evenly again. He flares to his outside again, just like that front left hoof. So, all right. Oh. I'm gonna start at the quarter since it's already breaking off. I'm gonna give myself a little starting nip there. And then uh, I might actually dig a little bit deeper into the sole this time to take more off. There we go. Okay, digging a little deeper into the sole, keeping my angle flat. <coughs> Keep my angle a little bit flat going into the toe here, just because I am, oh, digging into the sole. So I just kind of <laughs> pull his foot back out. Always staying aware of his feet. All right, we'll go back. All right, here at the toe, I'm gonna start my angle a little bit here. Oh. Okay, I have to find where I was nipping. Helps to start where you stopped. All right, I'm gonna nip. I guess I already cut that. Here. Big chop. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Here again. Chop. I'm getting a little bit shallower on accident as I go around, but I'll just fix that with my my rasp. There we go. Try to get now flatten my angle out as I go through the quarters. Oh kind of losing a little bit of depth here, but that's okay. Stop. And then I'll get heels. Uh, that's fine. So I lost a little bit of my depth from one side to the next. <laughs> I have to do this heel. Um, and honestly, that kind of happens a lot when I trim, but I just always go and fix it with my rasp. Here, chop that heel pretty good. Nice, cool. And I never want to let him set his foot down when he's pulling on me like this because then he learns that when he gives resistance, he gets to let his foot down. But if I want to take a break, I'll hold his foot until I feel him relax and then I'll let him set it down. Good job. All right, so that was my first run through and then I'm gonna go and rasp. So I took, you can see, I took way more off on the <laughs> outside than the inside, which honestly I do a lot. Um, so I just have to go in and fix that with uh, my rasp. So probably like a centimeter here, maybe like three quarters of a centimeter on this side. But yeah, cool. So, when I look at this foot, you can definitely see that uh, he's got a lot thicker of a wall on this toe than he does coming around to his heels. And to me, that means that he just grows more of his toe than his heels, and so he tends to get long toes on his back feet. Um, and on this side, he flares. You can see that he's got like a wider kind of heart shape on this side than he does on this side. So I haven't really learned a whole lot about how to deal with flares. Honestly, I'm just experimenting. I'm just gonna take a little bit more down on this side of his heel than this side. It seemed to work last time. If you guys have any suggestions for flares, let me know. I'm gonna start taking down this toe a little bit. So using the 
fine side of my rasp, kind of evening, evening it out to give myself an easier spot to work with. This would be a good example of where people use their nippers at a 45 to kind of take more of this toe and they have to do less rasping. I get a little nervous with that, with going deep on the toe, so I just prefer to rasp more. Flip my rasp around to pull upwards. Kind of looking at his heels. His heels actually look pretty even to me. I'm actually, uh, maybe this inside's a little high. A little bit more down, make it flat. Make sure there's no little high points that are gonna cause pressure. It's definitely high on this side right here. I'm gonna use my coarse side now because I want to take a good amount of, of um, tissue off. I always kind of check down as if you're looking straight down the hoof and I see which sides are high. To me, this side right here is still high. This heel is a little long. Oh. Relax. Oh. Upwards. My course. To get some of that side that likes to flare. Fine. And I'm going to set his hoof down and look at it from the ground. Make sure he's good when I let go of his feet. Okay, let's take a look. Definitely when I get my hoof stand out, I'm going to do more of this top dressing and it'll make that toe look much nicer and have that rounded appearance. But as far as the uh, the angles, I like the angle of my heel almost matching the angle of the toe. So angle between the toe, angle between the heel, almost identical. And that's uh, the, good, the good natural position of his particular hoof. <laughs> now, looking from the front, I like my angles side to side. One side of the hoof to the other looks pretty symmetric. Pretty happy with it. Still have a little bit of that flare here, but it doesn't concern me too much. What's up, ponies? Hi, Sunny. <laughs> Hi, Candy. So once again, I'm not really gonna do a whole lot of knife, hoof knifing on this because I like the concave look already. I don't need to dig much out. He's barefoot. I like to keep most of his sole on there. I can maybe do a tiny bit of his bars. Um, oh, he's a little bit harder because he doesn't like me to let go of his foot, but just kind of round out this bar so there's not a pressure point. Same on this side. This little knob right here can cause a pressure point when they're standing on their feet all day. So just kind of cut it down a little bit. These look good, his frogs look good. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. All right. Looks good. Okay, next side. Okay, we're starting with his front right. Gonna clean this out a little bit. With my knife, or no, with my hoof pick. This one, like, I'm not as coordinated bringing my foot in, but um, I'm gonna hook his foot around my knee again so I have a little bit of uh, two hands to work with versus one. I'm gonna really get all this dirt out so it's not interfering, interfering with my tools. I'm not trying to nip through little stones. Um, and it kind of lets me see the natural shape of where his bars are, um, how his frogs look. What's this? Is this like an indentation from, you know, is it just dirt? Honestly, I don't know. I think it's part of how his walls break off. I oh. think it's like some, another layer of, of huh? yeah, oh. another layer of keratin and they oh. just kind of start to split. Interesting. Yeah, I noticed they both started doing that once we moved here. All right, so I'm gonna start with the nip. Um, when I look at his foot again, I can tell his outside wall likes to grow longer than his inside wall. Uh, maybe like 
few millimeters. But, um, you know, so I'll just make a note to take more of that lateral wall off. Um, he's got a good amount of tissue, so I'd say almost a centimeter around the whole way. And I, I honestly kind of use this line right here as my guide on where I can put my nippers. So I'll start with the quarters again. I'm going to start at this quarter because it looks the thinnest and easier to get my first bite. I'm not going to bite a whole lot into the sole because I don't think it needs to go too far in and I kind of get a free edge so I'll kind of break that first nip there. Let me start with his heels actually. Yeah, I might be able to take even more. Nice. Go back. Okay. So this one I kind of went a little uneven so I'll just fix it with my um, my rasp. Nice, very nice foot to trim. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start doing a little bit of an angle now on the toe, so I don't have to take as much off when I'm doing the top dress. Could have gone a little deeper on that point of the toe, but um, it's okay. Here we go. There we go. And then uh, I flatten my angle back out as I head towards the quarters. There we go. Nice. And then I'll take a pretty good amount off of this back heel because that one's longer. And the other one. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Oh, I don't like that. All right. So this is just the the first cut here on his toe. He's got like a little bit of bruising. Maybe that's from slamming his feet uh, on the concrete Where's when they get oh, tiny little of that red the red line on the it's, it's yeah it's not really focusing but. Sometimes you'll see that, so, you know, when I first started doing their feet and I'd see that, I'd get nervous that I'm hurting them. But um, honestly, I think it's just, it'll bruise and then it'll grow out like that. Um, but yeah, always something to pay attention to, but I'm not concerned about it. So when I take a look at my, like, I guess my first pass of trimming, and I'm looking at the angle of his hoof, on this one I can tell, I can take more of that toe off than, than the heel. Um, his toe looks a little bit long still to me. And um, I guess the reason why I'm thinking that is just like the angle is a little bit too shallow for what I want for him. I want it to be actually a little bit more upright. And um, if I take a little bit more off right here, it's going to stand him a little bit more upright. OK, let's look at it from the front. I uh, can see maybe I want a little bit more evenness on this inside wall, so I might rasp a little bit more of that uh, inside surface, and then I'll just do a whole um, finishing rasp. So, all right, all right. So kind of the same as before. I'll look down the hoof first, as if I'm looking straight down. That actually looks pretty good to me. The heels look pretty even. Not a whole lot of high points right here. That's, you know, something I'll smooth out. And then I'll probably fix up this this edge. But other than that, it looks pretty even. And then I'm remembering that I want to take a little bit more toe off. So I'll probably use the coarse, the coarse part of the rasp um, when I get here. So starting with the smooth one makes the whole job easier, I think. Just do a nice quick run through over the whole hoof. it around if I want to pull up on my rasp, even out the heel a little bit, this heel too, 
And then remembering I want to take a little bit more off of the inside wall. Flaring. I'm going to take a little bit more toe. Trying to stay more towards the wall, less on the um, sole of the hoof. Trying to go at that 45. Staying on, on uh, the toe and not doing a 45 on the bars or the heels. So just the toe, this area right here. A little bit on the 45. Flip over to my, my um, fine side. Even out this little area that I messed up on right here. everything out. Go to both hands. A little bit less coordinated with my left hand. Slower. And then, um, oh, just got my knife. Not going to do a whole lot either with the bars, but I am going to clean up this little chunk right before his, his heel. Sometimes I just get a little knob just like this right here little spot that can cause some pressure. So I'm gonna top that off. So some ways to hold your hoof knife, grab it with your right hand, use your left thumb, and you have like a lever, a lever arm. So stabilize your right hand on the hoof, you use your left thumb, you press it down, and you can kind of do your fine movements with your left thumb. So kind of hook down, and you get these nice little movements and you get less of the, the um, stuttering. And then if you're gonna pull up, I take my um, pointer finger of my left hand, balance my right hand on the hoof, and I kind of curl it around like this, around the hook, and I pull up, so like this. All right, frog looks pretty good. I'm not really gonna do much. I already kind of cleaned those up a different day. Maybe I'll make another video of how to clean their frog, or uh, um, cut their frogs. Oh. All right, so let me set it down and take a look. All right, so to me that already looks better. Just like super small little changes, and I do think it makes a, a difference. Nice, okay. Let's go to that back foot. Alrighty, we're gonna go to our last foot, um, back right. Uh, so pretty much we're just gonna do what we did before, take a look at the angles at where he's flaring, kind of get like a mental picture in my mind of um, how much I wanna take off. So if I'm looking at this foot, um, I can see that he flares, flares to the outside in here again. Overall, I like the shape of his foot. And um, if I'm looking at it from the side, balance from heel to toe, um, I actually like the angle of his toe right now and he's just flaring a little bit in that back heel so I'll probably make my trim pretty uniform throughout the hoof. Pick the foot up, he's a little funny with his back feet so I'm gonna kinda keep my safety, keep a hand on his foot, I feel like he's giving me trouble, I'm gonna pull his foot back, grab his toe, lengthen out his foot, always kinda paying attention to it and I think he's gonna snap his foot back Bring in my, my knee, keep a hold of his toe. And I'm kind of bracing my, el my elbow on the back of his, um, his hawk. I can feel that he's being a little funny right now, so I'm just gonna keep my toe. Stand here for a sec. Your safety comes first, so you don't wanna just jump in and then you kind of stop paying attention to what they're doing with their bodies and get kicked or something. All right, so you can see here, he kind of broke off a little bit at his, um, his quarters again, and then he's flaring to the outside on um, this lateral wall. So here, I'm not as coordinated again with my, uh, my left hand. And this is, this is the hoof where my left hand is mostly gonna be the one um, directing the, uh, the nippers since he's a young horse and I feel more safe and comfortable if I kind of keep my right hand in control of his, his foot. So 
this might be a little bit different if I was working with a horse that was a little bit more experienced with his back feet. Oh. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna start here, get my first nip. Nice, break it off. Okay. I'm gonna keep my, my hand on his foot because I feel a little safer that way. I'm gonna place my next nip and then I'm gonna chop. Use my right hand a little bit. Oh. Nippers, that looks good to me. Sometimes you're just not gonna get a great uh, cut if they're really giving you some trouble, but we can always make it a little bit better with our rasping, so. Start to get an angle on his um, toe. Right. We've got his back foot trimmed. He was really giving me a lot of trouble, so it wasn't the best trim, but um, I'll do some rasping. a little all over the place as you guys can see <laughs> but he was really giving me a lot of trouble so that was the best I could do sometimes you just gotta go with it so I'm gonna go over it with my fine side of the rasp try to even out my nipping spots here and kind of see <laughs> it was quite choppy but oh well even this out and then I'll look for my high points. So I'm gonna let the foot hang, look at the heel. Heels actually look pretty even, maybe this one's a little bit higher. So I'm gonna take that down, take this down a little bit and then take this high spot down here and then get a little bit more of the toe, round it off. So, ho, ho. Pulling a little bit. Bring this heel a little bit shorter. Trying to make a flat plane. And then I'm gonna start my angle on the toe here. I'll probably go into the coarse rasp soon. Switch hands, turn my rasp around so I can pull up. Oh. Heel down on a little bit flat with the rest of the foot. Always kind of keeping a hand on his foot so if he pulls it back, I feel safe and I can be in, in control of his foot. Oh. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. Don't give me trouble. <coughs> Here. This foot is just not going to be as good as the other ones because he's just giving me trouble and it's better to be safe. Keep a hand on the foot. Just flip my rasp around, get to the coarse side. Take some of this toe off. It's, you can see the outer wall is much thicker here on the toe compared to up here on the heel. So. I want to take more of this toe off. Make up that 40 degree, 45 degree angle. Right. Smooth this transition out a little bit. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh fine side of my rasp. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of knifing. This side's gonna be harder because I'm not really able to brace with my other hand. And so I'm just gonna do some quick nips without trying to cut anything too deep. 
of those little edges of there we go that's good enough for me all right let's do a top dress all right guys <laughs> so we're heading to the end of this trim now I'll just top dress the foot. Pretty much this means I'm gonna put his hoof up on this hoof stand and kind of get that 45 degree angle around his toe a little bit better. Um, I didn't buy like a real hoof stand, I just made my own. Um, this is a car jack, kind of a shorter car jack because I have ponies and um, I don't need something too tall for their legs. But this is nice because it naturally raises up, lowers down. I just tied, um, what is this like? Uh, a kitchen towel to the top and I secured it with some bale twine so this is for um, I can rest their hoof on um, like this or stand it up but these are actually the rasps that I started with before I used anything else um, and I occasionally use them to get that roll so we'll use our hoof stand now okay so to do the top dress he's a little bit newer with this he's not as comfortable with this thing and he tends to pull his hoof back a lot so I have to really that is the drawback of this is he's really able to pull it back easily but I can get him to kind of put his hoof up there for a little bit and then I can top dress so let's get some of this angle going pretty much just going around actually I want to use my um, the fine rasp and I want to get a little bit more of a bevel on that toe not really doing a whole lot at the quarters and the heels and uh, some sides are easier than others, pulling and pushing. I think it's always easier to push and switch hands. Oh, kind of pulling back right now. And this is also like I can address maybe if I see some flares or unevenness in the toe. And try to stay to the toe, not a whole lot on the heels. And then let me take a look. Like a pretty good bevel to me. Set it on the ground. Looks like a pretty good bevel to me on that toe. Check out the evenness, and I really like that. <laughs> All right, so this is his right front. Um, pretty much, I'm just trying to get a little bit more of that bevel around that whole toe. Sometimes you can go down too. You feel like you have a good amount to take off. And I feel like this front one, I have a little bit more to take off on the other side. Overall, it actually looks really good already, so I don't have much to do here. Front feetsies. Sometimes this can be a little bit harder if they're funny, if they're back feet. Oops. Back feet tend to flare on the lateral edge. And I try not to take off too much of the wall, like downwards, because I think I'm just thinning out the wall then and it's going to be more prone to breaking. But um, I'll actually do more of my stuff. Oh, from when I'm actually trimming it, but here maybe I'll just take a little bit, a little bit more of this off. And then I'll just go to the toe. And like I said, I don't have a whole lot of answers for flares, so if you guys have some advice, let me know. But at this point, I kind of just rasp it down a little bit more than I would something else. Oh, oh boy. It's just stepping on it. <laughs> I'm gonna it's strong. That toe edge here. I'm not as good as my left hand, so we're just gonna do what we can. Okay, switch to the other hand. A little bit more of that rounded look on the front toe itself, helping him move a little bit smoother when he's trotting and cantering. That looks good to me. Oh. So I'm just gonna do the same here, kinda grasping at a 45 around the edge of the hoof. Get it a little bit more 
uniform, see if there's any spots that are uneven, like right here. This, this was the really difficult foot, so I chopped it up a little bit. <laughs> but I'll maybe try to round out a little bit of that toe on this edge. Make it a little bit more even. for joining me tonight you guys i think we did a pretty good job on his feet had a little bit of difficulty with him pulling his back feet but he's a young horse and it, that's just how it's going to be for a little bit and so i hope you guys liked this video let me know if you have any suggestions things you liked things you think i can improve on and i will keep filming my process and just kind of uh this is how i learned so i encourage you guys to get out there um, practice doing your horse's feet ask questions do your research and join me again for my next video thanks